Hey, I'm Max. Let's go check out some New Zealand geckos. This is a rock cow gecko of New Zealand, nocturnal and terrestrial species of gecko, enjoying some droplets after a fresh mist. This is Stumpy, aka Thirsty Little Oyster. This video is about the day in the life of a New Zealand gecko. These are some of the rarest geckos in the world and I have a permit to keep them in captivity. Now it's currently winter here in New Zealand and I'm in the South Island and it's super cold. We've got snow, we've got ice, we've got frosts. So these geckos are not super active. It's 10 degrees today, so it's not really a day in the life. This is more of an inspection day and I'm going to walk you through it. The days are shorter and the days are colder, but there's still so much life in winter here in New Zealand. These geckos, they thrive in these harsh climates, in these harsh microclimates that we have here in this country. So I want you to appreciate and I want you to enjoy this video for the fact that I'll walk through the simple routine of how I look after these guys in the colder months of the year. Where they're less active, they eat less, but they're still incredible. So this is the first part of the process. I collect fresh browse from around the garden, basically native trimmings. Now why I do this is because although the enclosures are bioactive, I'm trying to best replicate their natural environment as best as possible with arboreal elements. And I can't grow these massive trees inside small enclosures. When they're outside, it's a little bit different. I've got much larger spaces and I can grow a lot of this stuff as bioactive elements, but this is why I do this and this is what it looks like. This is the beginning before we replace this every two to three days and put fresh brows in. Now I have to be super careful when I remove the old native trimmings or brows from the enclosure because I don't know if you guys have ever seen New Zealand geckos before but their camouflage is immaculate. So making sure they're not stuck or hidden amongst any of the old brows is critical. So one of the species that I hold is the Northland Green Gecko. They obviously come from the North Island of New Zealand. Some of you internationally might have heard about this animal since they've somehow made their way to other parts of the world. Somehow they're super rare overseas but here they're also super rare, they're precious absolutely stunning animals these guys are the reason i am in this hobby so once i remove the old brows the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to give the bottom layer a really good misting it's super important because this is the most bioactive part of the enclosure it's something that i've started growing from the very beginning and i want to make sure that this remains a very very stable environment so this gecko is actually quite a hardy species and that's simply because it comes from the north island at the very top where it's a lot more humid it's warmer and it actually does just fine in the colder much colder climate down here in christchurch and canterbury and the south island which makes it a really really versatile gecko but these are also parameters that you have to consider especially when you're building them in indoor and outdoor enclosures to bear in mind that they do need a bit more humidity as well as other things. So once I've got all the new brows in, it's looking lush, I'm gonna give everything a good mist because I want the geckos to go back into an environment where it's a bit more humid, there's some dew for them to drink and they can explore their new home. Now the next key piece. So this is what I feed them in the winter months. Well, I don't really feed them, I just make sure that these are always available, isopods. Now I've only come across two species here, I know we have a lot more, but essentially it's the ones I always find in my garden and I'll throw them in there and they act as cleanup crew, they also act as food and they just look after the environment as much as being there for the geckos when they need them. Now what I do do in the winter once every two weeks, I'll give them fruit paste or I'll give them honey. So what I do with the honey is I'll put it in random parts around the enclosure to give them some enrichment and then I'll release them back. And that is my inspection routine during the winter months with some awesome Northern Green geckos. So 
So when it comes to the Rokawa Gecko, it's essentially a rinse and repeat process. I do the same for them as I do for the others, especially during winter. I just make sure that the base layer gets a good misting, some cute little ferns growing. I take all the old brows out and I'm putting all the new brows in. And I'm trying to make it as bushy as a boreal as possible. The Rokawa Geckos are a bit more terrestrial and nocturnal in nature, but they still love climbing all through everything. And you'll see some footage at the end of them exploring the new brows as they always do once I do these inspections. But essentially, they'll get some isopods, they'll get some honey as well. And I'm hoping that these amazing geckos, absolutely stunning animals, endemic to New Zealand, enjoy the new environment. Now because this was an inspection day I thought I'd get out my forest geckos and make sure they're doing okay. It is winter, I don't know if it's because it was 10 degrees or they hate me but they were grumpy. They were giving me their hisses, they were showing me their tongues but anyway this is Greg and his girlfriend, absolutely incredible animals and they are New Zealand forest geckos. So when the sun sets, a whole new life begins. These three species of gecko are all cathemeral in nature. Cathemeral means that they're active day and night. So when the lights go out and my neon light comes on, that's when the cool stuff begins. They start to explore and they start to hunt. So like I said, it's winter here in New Zealand, and as I keep these guys inside, I still give them a stable temperature between 10 and 15 degrees so they experience the colder weather. But these guys are hardy, and for reptiles that's incredible considering that they rely on external temperatures to regulate their own body temperature. And even in winter in these cold temperatures, these guys still hunt and they still eat. So I'm trying to replicate their native diet as much as I can. I hope you guys like this one. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm going to leave you with this royal cow gecko, enjoying a highly nutritious grub. I don't know what the grub was thinking, but it was going right towards a deadly, dope predator. I don't do this because I want to. I do this because I have to. These animals deserve the spotlight.